Whoa, what was that flash? It's a big flash over there on the side. Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. We have that Schnook salmon fiasco in the Veda Canal. Um, it rained quite a bit overnight, so river level actually came up by a foot and it actually got quite a bit dirtier. Um, so I decided to move to a different spot to try out. Right now, in the early afternoon, before we head down to the canal again, trying to catch that incoming tide. Um, this looks pretty good. So we'll see, like, I see lots of Chinook salmon jumping over here again, but hopefully there's some coal mixed in there too. There's another one. It's feisty cold. Whoa, look at the fight. Whew. So I already got one on the beach, and this is the second one. Let's see what we can do here. Well, it might be a wild. Nice little wild male. We're gonna let this one go. Whew. So far this is going pretty well. Um, so yesterday we had a great day down the canal while well, catching sh lots of Chinook salmon. And then overnight the river came up a little bit because we got quite a bit of rain. And in the morning the water colored up, um, wasn't really fishable. But then as the day went on, it stopped raining, it got dry and uh, the water clarity uh, became better and better. And now it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I popped up to a run all by myself there's no one around and uh, just seeing quite a few fish in front of me, both Chinook salmon and Ko salmon. Um, first I released one, and it was a pretty big fish and the second fish was hatchery. Look at this one right here, it's massive. Look at that, probably my biggest hatchery though for many years now. Oh my goodness, that was a good bite. So it's been raining on and off in the last several days, which is pretty awesome for late September. Normally this time of year, it's pretty dry. 
Um, last year it didn't rain until almost late October, so river remains pretty low and clear, which isn't ideal for cold fishing because the fish gets pretty spooked, you know. But um, oh, I got out of breath. I kind of ran all the way here, but um, getting all excited. But you know, with this amount of rain, the river didn't blow out, which means it's staying um, relatively low, just a little higher. But the water color is slightly greener than before, which means that we're telling the coho fishing. Oh, yeah. Nice! Just spring, no coho? No coho, yeah. yeah? Wow. Oh, oh, that's a cold. That's a Oh no, I lost it. That's a lost it. I lost it. That's a lost it. That was a cold. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's one. There's, there's a cold. Oh, there's a cold. Oh no. No, 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 no. Two in a row now. Yeah, one day he just like got up instead of leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a coal. That's a coal. I think it's a coal. Oh. That one grabbed it on the drop. Uh, on the drop. Uh, I think it might be foul hooked actually. And, oh, it came off again. It came off again. What the heck? So that's three coho lost in a row now on this new pattern I'm using. It's a bit of a chartreuse and orange and on a kind of like a gold plated. Um, Two and a half ounce, well, not two and a half ounce, 12 grand or two fifth ounce. The hooks are sharp, but I don't know why all three fish came off. I didn't set it hard enough. Oh, right away, yeah, right away. Oh no, that's on the prime swim too, eh? Prime lures, yeah, they got an orange on. That was first cast. <laughs> Oh no, again! No, it's a pink. It's a pink, yeah. <laughs> pink salmon, hopefully the last one of the season. Go on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a Chinook? I don't know. Oh, no, no, it's a coal. Is it a coal? I think so, yeah. <laughs> now we're getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's hatchery. hatchery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> they're there. Thank you. Yeah. One just peaked up. Really, really shallow water. Another one just came up. Hard to get those ones to chase. Hey, hey, can you grab my net? Grab my net from my back. It's a coal. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Come help over here. <laughs> no, you got it, you got it. I won't yell at you if you lose it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I got it. Oh, no. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. That was a hatchery oh, fish, too. That was, so oh. that was a hatchery fish. <laughs> Is that cool? 
Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Oh, oh dang. <laughs> oh, no. Good morning, everybody. You can't see me because it's still quite dark. It's about 6.30 in the morning. We got sunrise in the horizon happening here. Last night I came to this run and found lots of coho in here. And I managed to lo lose four fish in a row. And I thought, geez, I really got to come back this morning and try it out. So I slept for a few hours, got everything ready. Here I am again. Gonna be casting spoons and spinners. Um, the water's not very deep here. It's only about, mm, I'd say two feet at most. But the current is quite slow. It's not, it's like walking speed, maybe a little faster. And those coals just sitting down there. And as soon as I saw those fish yesterday, I knew they would bite. And for some, for whatever reason, I managed to lose four in a row. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been a losing streak for about a week now, besides catching some well, catching and releasing some well coho. So I'm hoping this morning will change a little bit. There's nobody around at this run, which is great. There's quite a few people upstream for me in the next run, quite a few people downstream for me um, in the next run as well. So yeah, let's hope for the best. Okay. I've been fishing for 10 minutes now. I thought I was filming, but I didn't press the record button. Great. Managed to lose one already, which was an excellent start. It was a fat coho as well. Um, but I'm just trying to see where the fish are right now. Okay, I see them. This one, this one, this one, this one. There's a whole bunch of thing right in front of me in like two feet of water and I lost that one as well. What the heck? From all these hooks. Okay, so oh sick. So I don't think the problem is the hook, it's really sharp. The problem is we can search shallow water and it's how to get a good hook set into them. Oh my goodness. Oh, two in a row now. That's six fish lost in the last 24 hours. This is not a good sign. So I can see a whole bunch sitting in like, maybe even, I don't know, like two feet of water, maybe even less. I'm standing in ankle deep water. There's you gotta. This one, this one. Another one. Not freaking. Feels like a spring though. I don't think it's a coho. Oh, snap me off. This is an awesome start. <laughs> what the? Oh. Snap me off. <sighs> if, if you can 
<laughs> and you see how frustrated I am right now. Oh. I think that, well, I mean, that couldn't have been cold. That, if that was a cold, that would have been really big. That had to be a Chinook salmon. Got it. Got it, Delia. Hope I get a few more chances. Um, because the water's so shallow, these fish can easily get spooked. My expectation is that these fish will stop biting pretty shortly, just because of how shallow the water is. Um, cold salmon are known to be pretty sensitive so they they get pretty tight-lipped as soon as there's any disturbance you know after three fish in a row losing and splashing around that could easily turn the fish off I can see lots of them right in front of me right now like geez that's a whole lineup of them this is frustrating did I say frustrating how many times have I said that so that's why you got to pick a spot where there's Almost no one around. There's very little disturbance on the water. You're not doing any false hook set and making any splashes. Don't wade into the water too much. I'm standing in ankle deep water um, without going too deep because the fish are just sitting quietly in front of me. And the chartreuse spinner is still quite dark in the morning. So hopefully that bright yellow or chartreuse will be more visible in the water. There's no one. Yep. Are you Maybe I'll die <laughs> No no, I've lost quite a few actually. This oh I'll start cursing in a minute. Well, I was already cursing. That might be a coho actually. Let's go. Oh, finally. Oh, it's wild. Oh, one fish. Wild. Love catching coho. Ooh. Off it goes. So, for whatever reason, this chartreuse spoon continues to produce. But I'm pretty sure I know why. It's because the water is so clear and this just doesn't stand out as much as some of the other colors like orange um, just looks too unnatural in this clear water but this you know it kind of hides a little bit and the you know, fish notices um, in the last second yeah I've been catching quite a few fish quite a few more fish than any other pattern right now when the water is clear and it just I don't know it's definitely more effective than the other patterns Most of the hatchery fish have been picked off further downstream, but on the other hand, I'm getting away from the crowd. Fishing mostly by myself, having a good time, still catching fish, just fish that I can't keep right now.
I think that was a cold as well. Yeah, that's a cold. Oh, over the rocks, over the rocks, over the rocks, over the rocks. Come here. Ah, oh, it's wild as well. I can see the adipose. Massive. Oh, come on. Jeez. Not a wild. This one is a little fatter than the other one. Not a wild. Beautiful fish. Look how bright it is. Ooh. Well, those are some of the most frustrating days I've had in recent years when it comes to cold salmon fishing. I've been chasing these fish for over two decades now and you're always learning something new every day. And over this period of time, you're trying to improve on your techniques, your timing, your methods, and, um, and you're definitely getting better at it. But from time to time, uh, these fish will always outsmart you and uh, that's part of the fun and that's what keeps bringing us back to the river every year. Um, I filmed these particular days around mid to late September, which is just before the peak cold salmon season, which is coming up in the next two weeks in early October. And um, you can catch cold salmon in the Fraser Valley anytime from late August until early December. But the, peer, the peak period is definitely around October. In September, um, there are lots of cold around, but because the river is quite low due to the lack of rain, um, these fish are harder to entice. Uh, when the river is low and clear, uh, they're pretty sensitive. So the best time to catch them is early in the morning, but I do get them during the day as well, as you see in this video. Um, when asked about what's the easiest way to catch cold salmon, I would say, uh, grab yourself a spinning rod and reel setup and grab a box of lures like these and uh, just go out and cast and retrieve. This is probably the easiest way to get them to bite. Um, landing them is a different story as you see in this video because it's really hard to keep them on the hook when you have a lure like this on your line hanging off the mouth of the fish. Um, it's pretty hard to keep that hook in the mouth because you, you have this extra item that's weighing down and uh, you know especially when the fish jumps it's uh, it's pretty easy for that hook to pop off so let's talk about the gear a little bit speaking of fish popping off you want to have really 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 sharp hooks it's so important I can't emphasize that enough it's so important to have really good hooks on your lures and uh, when I first started out I think I was cheaping out quite a bit and uh, I would buy pretty cheap hooks and not only are they not sharp but they would bend too easily so what I mean by that is this is the shank of the hook if this part bends too easily and when you're fighting the fish when you're pulling and the fish is pulling and if this shank actually bends um, the fish is gonna slip right off so you gotta have pretty strong um, a pretty strong hook so these prime lures come with these really nice mustad um, uh, hooks and they're really thick not only they're thick but they're also just very um, they don't, they don't bend very easily and I love the uh, the shape of it. It kind of bends in a little bit So that kind of secures the uh, the fish on your line pretty well But you do lose them from time to time The reason I was losing so many fish in that on that one particular day was that the um, I guess the water was too shallow and when you are trying to set the hook uh, when the water is shallow um, You don't have much room to do it. You're trying to do it lightly and so the hook doesn't fly out and don't miss the fish but at the same time it's so easy to, for that hook to fall out but yeah so having really sharp hook is really important i do have some replacement hooks as well i love these uh, vmc um, tech set sidewash open eye hooks as well um, these ones you know what i just noticed so i bought these uh, not a couple years ago and these come in two different 
uh, styles. So you got these um, regular shanks, which are quite thin. Well, no, the, the gap is quite uh, thin. Well, what do you call it? Like quite narrow. Then you have these um, short shank ones, which have a much wider gap. Um, I think my preference is actually these regular ones, not the wider ones. I don't like to have, um, I don't like the gap being too wide because that just kind of gives, gives the fish, uh, I would say give the fish more chance to get away. So try out these ones as well. Um, there are, there's so many different kinds of hooks in the market and I really, at, at the same time, it's up to your fishing style as well. So there's definitely ones out there that will suit your fishing style. And the most important part is don't cheap out on hooks, like I said. So don't go out there, buy a huge amount for less money. Uh, you definitely want to invest on good hooks because you only get so many chances when it comes to hooking cold salmon and you want to make every chance count, right? So having really good hooks is important. Um, I, <laughs> I use this chartreuse um, glory spoon quite a bit in my videos and I do catch quite a few fish on them but like I say in the video um, it's I think it's mostly due to because the water is so clear and low this tend to work pretty well under that those conditions but as soon as the water gets I guess gets um, cloudy gets um, a little has a little more color to it I'm start, I'll start using these color ones and I sure I'm, I'm gonna try to make other videos um, in this season with these other uh, pattern so we got some orange we got some pink ones there's lots of different ones to choose from um, I also start using these skinnier ones as well this wigglers from prime lures um, they actually produce for me um, in early September uh, there's one day I went down the river and uh, I, used, I used this particular pattern this orange stripe one that worked pretty well as well these ones sink a little uh, I guess sink a little better than the um, the glory spoons. These uh, thin, broader ones tend to, I guess, flutter a lot more and suspend a lot more in the in the water compared to these ones. So they have different applications uh, to them. I also use little spinners. So spinners come in uh, different sizes: size four and five. Uh, size four meaning. This is a size four blade and this is a size five blade. I love the size four ones, but a lot of people use size five as well. These you can fish by casting out in moving water and just, you can slow down the retrieve and just let this sit on the, in the water column and let it spin and, uh, and that works pretty well as well. Yeah. So the different ways of presenting your lures, and there's three different styles of lures I just showed you, and uh, they all work pretty well. And I, I love to switch uh, between them, trying to get the fish to bite. Um, okay, so one thing I want to talk about is um, how do I fish my spoons? So with these glory spoons, what I like to do is I love to cast a little upstream from me. A lot of people cast straight out in front of the uh, in front of the run, so they cast straight out uh, and then let it drift down and they swing the spoon back to you, back to the angler, I guess. What I like to do is, let's say if the river is flowing from left to right, I like to cast uh, between 10 and 11 o'clock, cast a little further upstream and I like to reel right away because the spoon is coming back towards you. So there's gonna be quite a bit of slack line going on here. So I'll reel pretty much right away and then I'll, by the time the spoon gets to in front of you, I'll slow down the retrieve. So I let that spoon sink a little bit more. And by the time I finish the retrieve, the spoon is around one o'clock down from me and not all the way down to like two or three o'clock. So I'm not swinging the spoon, but I'm basically covering water by casting upstream and let it flutter in front of you and slowly retreat back in front of me. So Cole would love to follow, they love to chase lures. So if you have a whole bunch of Cole sitting in front of you and you cast this way and the bring, bring the lure back to you, um, more often than not, they will start following behind it and they'll chase it and hopefully they'll grab the spoon as well. If you don't see any Cole following it, if you do see fish around, um, it 
could mean several things. They're just not biting at the time. They could be uh, someone else could have been fished over them, could have fished over them uh, before you. Um, they could just be taking a break. But I've also seen that, you know, I, I would cast spoons out and over a school of coho and they don't move or anything. And after half an hour, one start following the lure. Next thing you know, two start following lures. And uh, before we know it, they start biting. And uh, so yeah, it's, I find that co salmon is pretty unpredictable. That's kind of what, why it's so fun. They can, uh, they can definitely surprise you a lot of times. So yeah, so we got some really good cold salmon fishing in the next few weeks coming up. If you get out and try to, to uh, use all these methods, all the spinning casting method that I explained, and uh, make sure you get your freshwater fishing license in BC before you go out as well. Um, all of that money goes back to the Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC to make our freshwater fisheries better. And uh, make sure you follow regulations, check your regulation, check the daily quarters for cold salmon. Oh yeah, so I mentioned in the video that you know there's hatchery fish and wild fish. The hatchery fish are the ones that you can keep in the Chilliwack River. Um, those are the ones without the adipose fin. So make sure you definitely check your fish while it's in the water, while it's in your catch and release net in the water. So just so that in case you have a wild fish, you're not harming it so you can release the fish um, without handling the fish too much in the water, right? Yeah. I think that's about it and uh, yeah good luck with the fishing in the coming weeks and um, if I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any other questions regarding cold salmon fishing leave a comment on the bottom I'm always happy to answer them and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so I really appreciate your support and until next time good luck fishing